where Tolkien was to spend a great deal of his time. And I'm joined by Maggie Burns, who works in Archive and Heritage at the Library of Birmingham. So, Maggie, what did the Tolkien boys do here? Well, they used to play all around. They used to pick blackberries. They used to pick mushrooms, and there was a farmer that shouted at them. But also, they used to go to the mill. Now, the poor millers, there was a father and son working at the mill, must have had a heart attack when they saw these really little boys toddling happily through the fields to where all the dangerous machinery was. So they also used to shout at them. And was he always on his own here? Or does he ever talk about being with his mother? Or is it usually just a land of children playing, little people running around, hobbit-like? Well, Hilary Tolkien, again years later, remembered them going for a picnic in the fields. Now, this was farmland, not this bit, but all the fields around, and they weren't really supposed to go in the middle of the fields, and the farmers would shout at them. Hilary remembered that... um, One day they went off to play, his mum made a picnic and came out to join them, but he said when she got there she made a deep voice and they were scared because they thought it was the farmer coming to get them. His forest seemed to have a big influence on his writing. Yes, he remembered a willow tree down by Sarehole Mill that someone cut down. And he said when he, 70 years later, he could still remember it was cut down and not used. There are so many trees just here where we're standing, and you can hear the birds singing in them. I think trees always meant a huge amount. We've talked a bit about um, the trees and the foliage and the landscape of the bog, but what about the people who lived around here? How did they influence his thinking and upbringing and writing? Well, he said that the hobbits were really based on the people he knew around here. He said they weren't lacking in courage. They could be tremendously brave, but they had rather limited imagination. Of course, in the book, the hobbits don't stay around their homeland. They set off on a big quest and an adventure. Does that say something to us about how he felt about this area and about the people around here? They all start off in ordinary, middle-class, working-class sort of places. If you like, Frodo's a middle-class kind of hobbit and Sam Gamgee is a working-class kind of hobbit. He's the gardener. But they go off in adventures and get transformed in a way. But at the end, they do come back home to where they started. It was here that um, the young Tolkien met Father Francis, who was the priest here. Maggie, was he kind of like a father figure to the young Tolkien, do you think? Yes, Tolkien said he thought he'd uh, learned how to smoke a pipe from seeing Father Francis smoke a pipe. Tolkien actually wrote that... He looked after him like a father and he was very, very close in age to his own father who died years before. There was only a few days difference between their birthdays. Number 37 no longer exists, but where was it? On the other side of the road from where we're standing, it was quite a big house with a long garden, like most of the houses in this road were a hundred years ago. And what was the thinking of moving the Tolkien boys here? Father Francis thought the boys might enjoy a bit more company. The landlady was Mrs Faulkner. Her husband, Louis, was a wine dealer. And she used to hold musical soirees that some of the fathers from the oratory would come to. Apart from them in the house, there was a young girl who just moved there recently herself, Edith Bratt. She was an orphan like the Tolkien brothers were. She was an illegitimate child and she liked playing the piano very much and that was fine by Mrs Faulkner when she was having one of these musical evenings but uh, when Edith wanted to practice it was, oh no dear, not now, off you go. So Edith was a pianist and it's said that she played light classical music, ballads of the time and occasionally something more stirring like Schubert or a Beethoven sonata. What kind of musician was she? Well, I think she was quite a gifted piano player and she'd hoped to be a music teacher. I think Tolkien enjoyed her music, although he wasn't really terribly musical himself.
They started going to tea shops in Birmingham. They would go for cycle rides together. They decided they were in love in the summer of 1909. Later, he would remember that they would be leaning out of their bedroom windows. They would whistle to let each other know <laughs> that they were there. Their bedroom was immediately over her bedroom in the house, talking all night. They would hear the clock Big Brum chiming in the distance and talking till dawn even sometimes. And in the autumn of 1909, they went for a long bike ride out to the Licky Hills. That's probably about eight miles from here. But I think they already felt they had to be careful because they set off separately. And when they came home, they came home separately. But what had happened is Tolkien had taken her for tea and cakes at a cottage in Rednall where he'd stayed for a week or so in the summer when he was supposed to be doing a lot of work for his exams. The lady who gave them tea and cake mentioned that they'd visited young Master Tolkien with a young lady to the cook at the oratory retreat, which is at the Lickies. That then got relayed to the cook at the oratory in Birmingham and he then told Father Francis... What was Father Francis's reaction to this deepening friendship? He was furious. Tolkien had a lot of admiration and affection for him. He talked about his love and care and humour, and he was a very generous man. But when he heard about this, he was Tolkien's guardian. Tolkien had to study for his exams if he was going to get a scholarship, and that was the only way he would go to university. He forbade Tolkien to see Edith again. I think they felt very much they were more than friends because they were so heartbroken, both of them, at having to part like that. But then what happened was it was their birthdays, which were quite close together. Tolkien's at the beginning of January and Edith's at the end of January and they went to a tea shop together and gave each other a present. Ronald gave Edith a watch and she gave him a fountain pen and they were seen together and Father Francis heard about that. <laughs> 